This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, and I welcome you all to First Presbyterian Church here in Smithfield, North Carolina. We welcome all of you near and far, those who are at home, as with every Sunday during this time of observing social distancing and the quarantine, we will be celebrating communion today and encourage all of you as you may select elements from what you have available to join in our communion service in response to the word proclaimed later in our service today. We want to wish all the women of our church uh, that have served so faithfully who have been teachers and leaders and mentors to so many uh, on this Mother's Day. We recognize them. We'd like to thank uh, Hanks Flores for the lovely roses that are behind me, which are placed in honor and memory of all those we love. I'd like to share a couple of pastoral concerns with you. Um, uh, just an update that Tom Johnson remains in the hospice care uh, here in Smithfield, and Sandra is with him. Uh, please remember them in prayer. We remember Frank Olive, who is uh, in care at Smithfield Manor and was admitted earlier this week. Also, our prayers are with Jake Jacobs and his family after the death of his father earlier this week. Uh, his father's name was George, and our prayers are with the Jacobs family and all all their extended family at this time. Uh, more announcements will be related to services and remembrances will be shared as they become available. Also, uh, as I've indicated from week to week, the church is alive and active here. I want to thank uh, Miss Jennifer Templeton for the wonderful program she's provided for the kids uh, with the support of Debbie Jacobs and the Educational Development Quadrant with materials they're providing uh, to at home for our youth and kids. Our youth group continues to meet via Zoom, and I'll have a post this week. They did something fun they wanted to share with the church and um, where they elected some superlatives. We also want to recognize two people who were to be graduating this weekend, George Beasley, uh, who received his master's uh, related to education administration, and uh, also uh, Madeline Horn. Who, would, uh, who did graduate from Lees McRae College yesterday. Um, one note about Madeline I'd like to share that we were very excited about. The, univer or the college, the university selected Madeline as the recipient uh, from employees and students for its humanitarian award, uh, service award this year. And uh, we congratulate Madeline also on that achievement and recognition. Uh, she was very active in the youth group and we uh, uh, just mentioned that Lee's McRae College is a Presbyterian Church a USA affiliated institution. Friday we had our Red Cross drive at, which was an outstanding success. We probably had double the number of donors. Uh, we exceeded our goal of 30 units collected. Uh, I believe it was 33. Uh, we had 41 people uh, come on site. Uh, everything was done with social distancing and uh, everyone was protective. But it's just a nice thing to remember that um, immediately for every pint of blood given, one person giving that helps save three lives in addition. So uh, just a tremendous effort uh, on Friday. A um, couple of smaller notes, things that happen around here, uh, people are doing and, and coming and going. Uh, Hubert Schmidt, who always uh, is out uh, trimming the bushes and keeping the uh, churchyard looking lovely, and I'm grateful to him for that. At a reminder to session, we do have a stated session meeting next Sunday. Um, it, I will be sending out a Zoom invitation. It will probably begin about 12.30. And uh, but this is our regular quarterly stated session meeting, and as I've shared with all of our community, we are meeting uh, regularly, uh, keeping um, an eye on the operations of the church. Uh, things are flowing smoothly with financial support and stewardship support. Uh, my personal appreciation to all of you who are faithfully uh, 
uh, maintaining stewardship to support these missions and ministries that continue during this time. If any of you have any needs, though, please contact me, Pastor Joe. Uh, most of the members have my cell phone number, or I can be contacted via Facebook uh, on this Facebook live feed, um, which will be a recording. And also, all of the pastoral reflections during the week and this worship service will be posted as a recording later today. I call you as God's people. Let us now prepare ourselves for worship. Please join with me with the bulletin that is attached on our uh, Facebook homepage uh, in our call to worship, and you at home may read responsibly. Praise the Lord, who has shown us the wonders of his unfailing love, and who, for the sake of his name, leads us and guides us. In you, O Lord, we put our trust. You are our God, and our lives are in your hands. Lord, let the light of your face shine upon us. Together, we may pray the opening collect for the day. God Most High, you call the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love that what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, in affirming our baptism and our initiation into the faith, we turn to God, setting aside the burdens and cares of the world that we have carried this week, and we share as a community and individually our prayer of confession. Please join me. Holy God, in baptism you claim us as your beloved children and set us apart as witnesses to your love. At times we forget, we bear the mark of your grace and act as if you have no claim on our lives. You call us to the risky work of justice and peace but we default to what is comfortable and safe. You call us to ministries of generosity and compassion, but we make little room in our busy lives for gestures of mercy beyond moments of spontaneous kindness. Wash us again with your grace and transform us by your word that we may proclaim the good news in word and deed through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Savior. Amen. I invite you now to join me in a moment of personal silent confession. My friends in Christ, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. As we give glory to God, we respond with the glory of Patri. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. At this time, for the young members of our congregation and the young in heart in our congregation, it's time with children. I brought Max here to help me again, uh, just to keep an eye on things for us. I think I'm going to let him sit in the offering plate again so he can keep his balance. And uh, I wanted to share with you um, this uh, message I have for you today is about finding our directions. Which way do we go? Now, um, I'm also, one person I neglected to think is Mr. Greg, who is uh, Bell, Greg Bell, who's helping film this. I don't know if Greg can zoom in, and I won't worry about it if you can't, but I'm hoping if you can see me, you can see this, is I brought some signs to share with you today. 
And I have, um, you know, these are common street signs. You can see one's a yield, which means to slow down, and then there's a stop sign, which is red, and then there's the railroad crossing with the big X, and then we have what is a pedestrian crossing, but particularly a, a pedestrian school crossing, and those just haven't been used much lately, and we miss that, I know. And, and because we're not in school and we're not going to places we usually have, even though some things are beginning to open up, uh, it's been a long time, difficult period. And sometimes we just don't know which way we're going. Last week we talked about a good shepherd. And one thing about having a shepherd is sheep always know where they're going. So Jesus is our good shepherd. And he was having a conversation with his disciples, but he knew he would be leaving them. The crucifixion was coming. The disciples didn't quite understand it, but Jesus knew. And he was trying to prepare them so that they would be able to lead the way. So I brought another kind of sign, just a simple error. And Jesus is having a, dis a discussion with his disciples, and he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And what he was doing was saying, this is the way home. It was a direct arrow up. Now, if you or I were driving, I might think, well, that at least means go straight ahead, but I don't necessarily think I would understand that it meant to go up. But if we follow Jesus, we are encountering heaven. Of course, that can be right in our midst. So Thomas, because Thomas was always asking questions, even after the resurrection, trying to convince. This was a person who needed hard data. And he said, Lord, we don't know which way you're going. We don't know how to follow where you're going. And so Thomas was kind of going his own way. And then another disciple asked a question, and he started going his own way. And they were all going in different directions. And sometimes, you know, we all get frustrated if we can't figure out the right way to go, and then we start going this way, which leads to dead ends. There are many voices right now trying to tell us, but the voice we listen to in the church is Jesus, and he said, I told you, follow me. I am the way and the truth and the life. Jesus will always lead us safely home. Just follow the path. Thank you for joining me, boys and girls. And I'd like to offer a prayer for us all this morning. I'm going to get Max to join me here. Gracious God, amidst so many voices and so many different directions being thrown at us, we find ourselves sometimes stuck at a crossroads. I ask that you would show your light along the path we should follow. Help us to recognize Jesus when we see him in words and deeds. I ask your blessing upon all of our children here at this church as they are trying to, with their families, find new ways. But let us know that together we can trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue our worship with our uh, scripture readings. And during the season of Easter, normally the readings are taken both from the New Testament, and today I'm going to begin with the first letter of Peter uh, in chapter 2. Together, let us listen to God's word to us. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. Through Jesus Christ, for it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then, who believe, he is precious. 
For those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, and as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And we continue in the Gospel of John in the 14th chapter. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these. Because I am going to the Father, I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together for understanding. God most high, we give thanks on this Sunday in May. During a time of beautiful spring and flowers blooming and life renewing. Open your word for us to give us understanding. Help us to recognize in the works and the wonders that Jesus does among us that we see you, the great I am. Help us discern the path before us, the way, the truth, and the life. And I ask that you would reduce your servant now, that the word made flesh in Jesus may increase for us all. Amen. Every pastor is challenged with what do we preach on Mother's Day. On a personal level, I've always sort of stuck with the lectionary because that just as a way of staying on the path, making sure I don't get into areas I don't need in to get into. And that's true of anybody who has a parent or a guardian or somebody's looked after them whether it was my mom or my dad they saw that I tried to get on the path and one of the places they put me was reading scripture as we read it together here to do the right thing to find which way I should go one of the things I posted a photo um, to celebrate Mother's Day today of my mom and me, and we were remarking, we see the family resemblance, um, the features that we share. 
Even her father, my grandfather, I never knew. You can look in his furred brow as a young man, and I see similar expressions that I express to this day. He is in me, and I am in him. We are reflective of one another. When we gather as the church community, even in this virtual setting, we begin to learn traits and expressions of mercy and kindness that begin to reflect on one another. And we learn these, and we are given these, because the Spirit has invested itself in us, that we may bear the image of Christ, the expressions, the behaviors, the deeds, in the same way that Jesus worked among us. When people are looking for Christ, or looking for the answer, or looking for the way to go forward, the church has an answer. The body of Christ, we have been given the answer because we ourselves were looking. Many of you are familiar with a phrase, and I actually had to do some research because I wasn't old enough to know where it came from, but I knew it by heart as a child. Which way did he go? Which way did he go, George, from a cartoon? And this is from a movie in 1940 of Foxes and Hounds. And it depicts a sly fox, George, and a lovable but dim-witted hound, Willoughby, who repeatedly asks George where the fox went. You almost think of a conversation that took place in a garden a long time ago between Eve and a certainly, certain snake who had words of wisdom and missteps to offer. And in this case, though, I think about that when I read this passage. You know, Philip, Thomas, which way are you going? Which way are you going, Jesus? It's almost comical. Right now, in this time of epidemic, when we see healthcare workers putting themselves at risk, political leaders at every level, level, from the president to the governor on down, people trying to make difficult decisions for the welfare of our community. It's as if we all decide all we like street sheep have gone astray. When it's like, which way do we go? Which way do we go? It's hard to trust one path. We're no different from those disciples long ago. But Jesus says, if you want to know the Father's will, if you want to see the Father, look to me. I am in the flesh among you. I dwell among you. I am the way and the truth and the life. This same Jesus of Nazareth, Joseph the carpenter's son, Mary's child, who healed the sick, ate with sinners, forgave those and showed not only mercy, but grace to draw people back into community back into relationship with one another, to bring healing and to bring peace together. And so during these days where fear seems to reign in the stores and the streets, we look to Christ, the author of life. Today, let us remember those who have died in the current epidemic. Let us remember those who have died away from their families of many causes. Let us remember health care workers who put themselves at risk or those people in minimum wage jobs who have kept things going. Let us remember that our fear and anger must not overtake us. In a time when we are called so fully to be the body of Christ, to do unto others as we would have done unto us, or as Jesus said to his disciples in this final discourse, love one another we've had two employees who were working at mcdonald's trying to protect the community who were shot calvin moonlin the family dollar security guard who was trying to protect and implement community standards shot and killed in this climate of fear ahmed arbery innocently gunned down. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. 
love one another as I have loved you. We have a call here and now. The world has many voices. It leads to many paths and all are dead ends, but not Christ, not in Jesus. And the disciples in their fear, whether it's Thomas and Philip or Peter or James, the women who gathered at the tomb who saw it empty and were afraid, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. You know, it's hard to lead in these times. I shared a reflection this week, a passage from Hebrews that said, Give your leaders cause to rejoice, not for sighing. And I fear there's a lot of sighing going on. As we remember lives lost for many reasons and many causes, we remember today, for some, Mother's Day is a very hard day. The loss of a parent, the loss of a child, or for child, children never received. This is a moment where we are called to be the light and love of Christ to all we encounter. For we are all grieving and we are all suffering. Yet in Christ we are celebrating the promise of life. Often at the time of death, I read this passage from the gospel that I've shared with you today. It's the final comforting passage I offer a family. I personally choose it very specifically because it is a promise that there is a way forward, even though we may not understand it at the time. Even this year, I'm dealing with my own grief at this season. But there is a way forward in Christ, and I know this. In the Catholic tradition, often a requiem is written. And it's, even though the word is to remember, to create, it's often thought of, well, this is a funeral, this is a death, and this is an end. Dan Forrest, a native North Carolinian, though, wrote another kind of requiem a few years ago. It's called Requiem for the Living. And I thought it was so important to share it today. It takes the basic movements of these remembrances but it turns it into a joyous celebration of life. The basic elements are there. There's, there are passages from Job and Ecclesiastes. Uh, the passage from Ecclesiastes about vanities of vanities as if nothing matters. But then it gives the Kyrie, the Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. It looks to the Lamb of God. And finally, it is concluding with Lux Eterna, eternal light, where all the living are drawn together and brought together. For you see, that is the path home. That is the path home. For as we follow Christ, we come together and we come into light eternal with all we have known. That is the promise that Jesus is giving to his disciples as they gather, confused, in this almost comical way. Which way are you going? Which way are you going? One of the most beautiful movements and, and ways this uh, requiem is expressed is one singer begins a note, and it, the note carries but no, beyond what mortals can carry, the singing is staggered. So where that one singer begins, another singer or singers pick up the note, and they begin, and it begins carrying and carrying, staying and carrying that same message. I think the church is, in the, is the same way. As the saints who have been depart, saints present now, in anticipation of the saints to come. And we carry that note, I am the way and the truth and the life, to bring love in the midst of fear, service and mission, to be obedient to those directives and commands that will help us live together in peace and harmony. Appropriately, in conclusion, P.T. Barnum always had at the end of his uh, American Museum of Oddities, which people would hang around and he couldn't get them to move or to go forward, he put up a fancy sign that said, Egress, this way to the egress. 
and everybody anticipating that this was another uh, site or um, exhibition to behold would go toward it without even thinking. They just simply followed the sign and they found themselves on the other side of the egress, the exit door, which would be locked. And P.T. Barnum being the sly fox, uh, like George earlier, the, uh, that we talked about, uh, would be able to charge them admission as they go through again. With Jesus, there is no sly deception. But he is leading us forward. And he is leading us together. And he is leading us on the way. In a climate of fear and anger and distrust, everyone's looking for Messiah, and even when they find him, if he doesn't satisfy what they think it ought to be, they begin looking for another. Which way did he go? Which way did he go? If you're looking for the Father, and you have seen Jesus, you have found him. For he is the way and the truth and the life. Amen. I invite you to join me now as we share our confession of faith using the Apostles' Creed. Together we affirm, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters from north and south and east and west, we are called to this table as one body and one spirit to receive the gifts that heal the relationships that have been broken. We come to this table for the forgiveness of sins. We gather as Jesus gathered with his disciples on the night before his arrest. Please join me now in prayer. God most high, creator of all good things, we remember that in you the word has its beginning the word made flesh the word that has always been with you and in time Jesus came to us in the flesh and showed us the way to go he became our good shepherd our redeemer our savior we pray too that in the changing fortunes of time, we discern the advocate that comes from you, the Father and the Son, together as one. Come, Holy Spirit, be present at this table among us all. Be present in our homes near and far, that even though we may be physically different, separated one from another, that we are joined together into the body of Christ to go and to share the love and good news that we have received, to bring healing to the nations, to be the ones that step forward in service. In all these things, O oh God, we entrust ourselves to your gracious care, and we pray as your Son taught us when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
We prepare ourselves now to join at the table with the saints who have been, who are, and who are yet to come. For we are one body in one spirit. Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after he blessed, and afterwards he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given to you. And that evening, he shared the cup with his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant, my blood shed for you. Every time you drink of this cup and share in this bread, we proclaim the risen Lord until he returns. Together, brothers and sisters, let us share in the body and the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Ancient of days, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, together we have come to the table at your gracious invitation. We have been nourished body and soul for service to enter into a world broken, fraught with fear, distrust, anxiety, let us bring with hope and courage and faith the message of good news that we have received in Jesus Christ. Strengthen for the journey now. We come to you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. As faithful stewards of the word entrusted to us, we continue to commit ourselves to the mission and life of the church to nourish not only ourselves, but to give of ourselves to others. I invite you, brothers and sisters, at this time, prayerfully, thoughtfully, and generously to give unto God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you have called us by name. In the gracious act of baptism, we have been received at your table to feast in the kingdom of heaven with all the saints. You have given us vision to see Jesus Christ and to follow in his light, to act in the image of Christ to all we encounter both as the body in a community of faith, but as individuals, wherever we may be. For wherever we stand, we make that place holy because your light dwells within us. Let all that we do and say reflect this grace. And we ask your blessing now in Jesus' holy name. Amen. We respond for all in thanksgiving for the word given to us and for the opportunity to serve our Lord and Creator with the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I charge you all now to continue on the way as a people of the way, to carry the good news of Jesus Christ, to love one another, to emulate all the gifts of the Spirit that we have been given, of patience and kindness and mercy and grace. For these we have received ourselves, 
And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May God be kind and gracious unto us. And may the Lord look upon us all with favor, now and forevermore. And together let the people of God say, Amen.